Hey traders, Steve here from Jackrabbit Trader. In the last week's video, we went over the performance that I had for July of 2019. And you'll know that I had one giant loss of over $2,000 in my SPY puts that I was using as a hedge against my portfolio. Today's video, I wanna go over what I did with that loss, why I took that loss, and how to ultimately prevent it. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do when we're looking at our losses is understand first of all that there's gonna be losses, right? There's, whether it's human error or news events or any other error on somebody else's part, um, we're gonna have losses. And the name of the game is to really limit those losses and make sure obviously that we're taking more gains out of the market than we are losses. So uh, when we have a loss and you know, in my case, thankfully I'm able to, uh, to keep those to a minimum, um, over the last couple of years, but when we do have a loss, we want to make sure we go ahead and look at that and analyze it and see, you know, was there something we could have done differently? Is this something that I could have avoided in the future? Um, and really ultimately determine and, and, and justify why we took the loss. And if we can't, then we need to put provisions in place to make sure that we don't take that type of loss in the future and again, learn from that. So. Uh, that's what I want to do in today's video. Um, so the first thing we want to determine, as I said, is, is it human error? You know, was the loss caused by something that I did as a trader on my part? Um, or is it something that I can't control that's out of my control? And ultimately, in trading as it is in life, there's going to be things that, uh, you know, happen that we can't control. And, um, you know, when you look at a loss like a gap down because they pre-announced earnings or, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately a plane crash and Boeing drops you know X amount of percent um, those are things you can't control and, and ultimately the the real question is um, we're looking at the trades and the losses that we can control so that's number one understand you can't predict the future um, you can only react to it as we say here and you know determine if that loss was caused by yourself or someone else and then move on uh, if it was by someone else, can't do anything about it. It happens. Move on. If it was caused by you, now you have to evaluate exactly uh, what what it is and why you lock, why you let that loss kind of get away from you. So uh, we'll go back and I'll, I'll show you exactly where my loss was. And uh, again, I touched on it in last week's video, but um, you know we were trending down in this red market cycle for some time. Uh, I was successfully trading put options to protect against the portfolio and the month of May ended up being one of my best months um, so far this year and it was because of those put options and you know I, as we started getting closer to the bottom um, there was a couple things that you know we didn't or I didn't pick up on um, number one was this move came back into a previous low Actually, you know what, we're going to uh, let's change it to a different chart. So we don't have those market cycles. All right, so this low, this was that same area, okay, right in here. And we'll just note that this was the area that we were talking about in the previous video between these two arrows. And the low that came back down actually came into a previous low, all right? And that was something I didn't pick up on at first. I was so focused on <clears throat> the market trading below the 21 day moving average. I want to be short as much as possible. So any type of pop that we got back up into the 21 day moving average, I was looking to short. Okay. And we ultimately came down, hit this 273 area and quickly bounced. And on this day, even with the strength that they had, that the market had, um, I put on a short position and I was looking at, you know, we're coming back into this 281 level. Uh, and also at the same time, if we flip back to the other chart, coming back up into the eight and 21 day moving average. So I put on a short at that point, thinking we were gonna roll back over, thinking it's a short covering rally. Um, you know, this is the time we wanna be adding to some put positions. And at the end of the day, I was wrong, okay? It ended up marking the, the bottom of the market. And that's fine. I mean, I took my shot. I was wrong. Um, but why did 
did I let that loss get away from me? And it was a couple things. I think it was being right for so long in the month of May uh, that I was able to put those put positions on and not lose and, and really have a significant gain, almost like I said, $5,000 in that, in that month. Um, that was number one. And number two was I was just anticipating this market was rolling over. Okay, I'm looking back at times when we have, uh, you know, October through through January where this market just went lower and lower. And, you know, I'm trying to use that previous uh, area of the market and, and re as a reference um, and forgetting that every time in the market is a different experience, right? So uh, I ultimately went ahead and I was in those put positions and I held those put positions and I held those put positions and I held those put positions and ultimately they expired worthless and it was a mistake on my part and it was one that I kind of dug myself into a deeper hole and really couldn't get out of it so the reasons that I believe that I got into it was I let myself want to, you know my ego get in the way I wanted to be right I was right for so long I wanted to be right I kept using previous uh, experience as a reference which you know it works to an extent I mean obviously from support and resistance areas that's what that's what they basically are made of um, but the market was telling me I was completely wrong right I mean this market went from 273 it blew right through all the moving averages and it really never stopped so uh, you know what do we do how do we learn from that well we have to understand that and at least for me that when I put these put positions on, they need to be quick trades, okay? And, and they need to be in and out. Um, and I'm not looking to make these an investment like I am any other type of long stock option or um, trade. So uh, here, you know, I need to understand that I was wrong. I was stubborn, even though I knew I was wrong. And I need to make sure that I, I take those and I minimize those losses as quickly as possible. So. Uh, how do we go about doing that? Well, now my rule that I've added to my process is, you know, once we turn back into a green market cycle, trades are off, right? All put positions come off regardless, right? You could say, hey, it's going to come up and, and roll back over. Absolutely. But then maybe that's an opportunity to get back in. All right. So for me, I've instituted that process and that uh, rule within my process to keep myself on the right side of the trade, right? I'm getting into put positions when we break below the 21 day average, moving average. Why am I not using the 21 day moving average to exit that put position if I'm wrong, okay? And that would have limited a lot of gains. I mean, I was out, I could have got out right around 284. Probably, yes, would have taken a 20, 30, 40% loss on the trade, but then I held them and I held them with the hope that at some point the market was gonna crash, right? I held them because I was long stock. I mean, I put a lot of long exposure on in this case. And that's one of the reasons that I'm lagging the market this year, not only from the beginning of the year when the market really rallied, but also because I was slow to adapt in this reversal. While I did put on the long long exposure in the stock, I was holding those, those put options. All right, so $2,000 in gains from my long exposure was wiped away by the loss in the puts. So, um, you know, that's how I'm kind of dealing with a loss. And again, you know, the, the, the big takeaway here that I want to try and make sure everyone understands is this is not a complete rehaul of my process, right? You're going to go through losing streaks. You're going to have periods where you lose four, five, six trades in a row. All right. But if you know the trade, if you know the process works, you know the type of trade that you're trying to take, um, and you know how to trade the market and not just a strategy or, uh, you know, a, a system, I guess you can call it, um, then you're going to be able to adapt to those market conditions, all right? Because every type of trade, you know, if you're looking for certain patterns, or they're not going to work all the time, all right? I trade the weekly chart. I don't talk about specific patterns. I have uh, my breakout and my pullback. Those are the two. But the, real the reality is I'm trading between support and resistance. So that's my strategy, all right? My system is I'm taking breakouts and pullbacks. Right? But you can't take uh, breakouts and pullbacks and when the market is not conducive to taking those. All right, so again, understand that this is not a rehaul of my process. It is just the fact that 
uh, I'm, I'm just implementing and tweaking a little bit to make sure I don't make these same mistakes going forward. And I think that's a, a, a big part of this whole experience and the, and the whole success of, of traders is you have to understand that um, you're always learning in this business, right? There, there is no day that you're going to go in and say, I know exactly what's going to happen and we're going to do it this, this exact way. It doesn't work like that. Um, you're a risk manager at the end of the day and you need to make sure you take provisions to minimize risk when, when needed. And I didn't do that here. Um, and now I have systems in place to allow me to do it. So again, for me, red market cycle, we're looking at putting some puts on, all right? I just did that here in, uh, you know, I'm recording this video August 4th, um, but in the end of July, you know, we had a big breakdown. We broke right through the 21 day moving average. I put some puts on, all right? Um, I took them off already. I took that quick money and now we'll see how, what happens. But if we get a green market cycle and I'm in some puts, then you know what, they're coming off and we're getting back into, uh, into the swing of things and getting back to the process that we know about. So, um, I hope that helps. And again, any questions or comments, let me know in the description box below. I also left a link to my weekly trading process where I go over uh, how I identify these market cycles and how I go about my whole. Uh, weekly trading process and as always if you enjoy this video please subscribe and hit that like button we'll talk to you next time take care